Our next speaker is Terry Greenwood. Uh, Terry has beef cattle and farms in Washington County, Pennsylvania. We were just talking about uh, collecting old farm malls and restoring them. I have a farm, 60 acres. I didn't sign a lease. The lease is from 1921. I have 60 acres. Dominion Gas come on my property in 2007 and said, we're going to drill some wells on your property. I said, go on the other 60 acres that's not being used because I need my property. They hounded me for about six months, roughly, and they kept coming back, coming back. And I said, I have water, I have cattle. I said, how are you going to protect me? They says, well, we'll protect you. So they sent me a letter and said, we will protect your waters. I said, okay. I didn't have a choice. They were going to eminent domain my property because the lease was a never-ending lease. So they come on the property in November 2007. Didn't tell me they was coming on. Just cut the fence. Come on in. Start building roads. So our property is half mile long. They built a road half mile long. They built a road a quarter mile long. Uh, when they got done building the roads, I had cattle out. Couldn't keep them in for about three or four months. Uh, in January 2008, they got one well drilled. Our well water went, so we didn't have no drinking water. And seven days later, they finally brought us some drinking water, which we're still using a water fountain, uh, drinking out of it. Now we're paying for it because they discontinued it. They can do what they want to because they're so big, and who are you going to call? Nobody will listen to you. Then the second well they drilled on the top field, it was 280 feet from the pond where the cattle drank. They was drilling, all the water was running into the field. They were spilling it all into the field. So, we, in 2008, April, my cattle all started having calves. So I had 18 head of calf, cows. I had calves starting to die. I didn't know what was wrong, you know. I've been farming for 18 years on my own farm, and we used farms before in that. So they kept dying. Some lived. Some died. In the end, four of them was blind. Two of them was, had blue eyes. One had a cleft palate. Two had pure white eyes. So my oldest son says, let's fence the pond off because DEP and the gas company says, we didn't do nothing wrong, but I did call DEP, which is supposed to help you. And he says, there's nothing wrong with that water. They dump it in the fields in West Virginia. And I said this at an EPA meeting, and I'll stick to that. And I'll tell you who the DEP guy is, because he never helped us. So we fenced the pond off, but I still lost 10 calves, and I lost a, a two-year-old heifer. She died because they was drinking that pond. So whatever's in them chemicals, it killed my animals, and I know it'll kill people later down the road. So anybody with gas leases or anything at I feel sorry for you. I hope you can get out of it. And you don't want them around here because I've never been up here before and I like all these waters up here. And that's pretty precious. I wish we had water like that down in western Pennsylvania because western Pennsylvania is losing all its waters. Because we didn't have city water. It's a mile and a half down the road. And it don't do me no good down there. So I've got a farm with 60 acres with a, a temporary water supply from a gas company. And th that's how they treat you. Yeah, They treat you dirty. When they come on your property, they say, we can do what we want to. Who are you going to call? You can't call your neighbors because they can't help you. You call Harrisburg. I called Harrisburg, called Farm Bureau, called everybody. They said, what do you want us to do? Nobody will stick up for you. So you've got to stick together and keep them away from here. You know, Western Pennsylvania is getting like Colorado, Texas, and every place else. So keep them out of here. You know, I don't know what it will take, but keep them out of here. You know. so, I, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. Our next speaker is Ron Gula, and I was talking with Ron. Uh, he's also raised beef cattle, and uh, you know a lot of young people here have been in 4-H. Ron sold some of his stock. They were registered Kianina, and 
I don't know how many of you know what Kianina cattle are. They're the, one of the oldest breeds in the world, and they're one of the biggest. A uh, full-size Kianina bull can reach as much as 4,000 pounds. That's a whole lot of bull. <laughs> and it's a whole lot of meat and a whole lot of hamburger. And don't make them mad. Uh, folks, uh, you know, listening to everyone speak, um, I'm, I'm Catholic, and I went to my church over a year ago, and I talked to the priests about it. Actually, it was two years ago. And last summer, I had the opportunity to go to our bishop in Pittsburgh, uh, Bishop Zubik. And I told him, this is about peace, justice, and the integrity of God's creation. And these guys are destroying it. I used to work in the oil and gas industry. I'm not an expert, but I w used to work for Hughes Tool Company for, it was over a year. I worked for them twice because I had to quit once. And they hired me back a second time because they like to hire farm boys because they know you have a good work ethic. Um, and also I have a college education. The industry has labeled me that I was not a farmer, et cetera, et cetera. In my farm in Hickory, I happen to be the second horizontal done in western Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, period. I was the second guinea pig. And no, I wasn't farming that farm because I bought that farm in 1990, and it was 141 acres, and the whole place was grown up and dilapidated. I've cleared 80 acres of it. I, I uh, did a pond. I redid a pond on it. It was almost three acres. Um, I did a lot of work to this place. That's all I did every day, every day, because that's my passion, and I love to work. I'm not a druggie, and I don't do booze. So, but when it comes to work, let me loose. So, and I'm not a tree hugger, as they've labeled me. Uh, I'm not a far left. You know, I'm a steward of the land, and it's common sense. I've got a lot of common sense. You know, we have to cut trees. We need wood. We need lumber. Uh, energy. One thing I want everyone here to know, this is not conventional drilling, as the industry wants you to believe. It's unconventional drilling. And people have been nothing but guinea pigs. I've been on hundreds of well sites. I've documented many, many wells from start to finish what size casing, what size bit, what make bit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I watch these guys obliterate my farm. And a lot of people say, well, what would you sign for? You're greedy. You wanted money. Well, first of all, we didn't know they were doing horizontal drilling because they lied. They said vertical drilling. And we were going to get 300,000 cubic feet of gas free a year. I'm thinking 300,000 cubic feet of gas a year free. That's a lot of gas. Uh, something's not adding up here. And if I would have stuck to my gut, I'd have never gotten into the mess that I'm in. But everything happens for a reason, as my mom always told me. And uh, it's the same thing with, uh, as my priests have told me. God is walking me through this. And I'm educating everybody that I could possibly educate. So that you know, I got $8 and... 25 cents an acre. And the landman took 75 cents an acre. So do the math. All I wanted was free gas because I wanted to build a new house there. That was all I wanted. And I'm thinking, no problem. You know, a couple vertical wells, no big deal. I've been around them. It's not that intrusive. Well, when these boys start coming in, <laughs> And naturally, uh, the first well they did was a vertical. And by the way, they plugged it, because I'm, I'm sure it was just a test well, but they did plug it. Uh, the verticals that they did drill, um, they, they're pretty much done. They're duds. Um, and they drilled at no five. They plugged it last fall. They went up the road over a mile. Drilled on my, or they drilled a well up there in 06, a vertical. Uh, they plugged it last fall. And we also had a methane leak. So... And supposedly there wasn't a mine in that area. So what we think happened, my neighbor who had the third horizontal done, what I truly think happened, they overhorsed the frack. 
I might be totally wrong, but my neighbor told me to come over to his place back in, this, I think it was summer of 06, and he said, come look at my, uh, my yard. All the grass was dead, it was big circles. I said, it's coming up through. What is it? I said, it's probably methane, it's gas. I, you know, what else would it be? Because it's going to migrate. Well, you know, last year, uh, last fall, when they plugged the well on my, my property and on my neighbor's property, they were trying to get rid of that methane leak because finally DEP came out with monitors, methane monitors and solar panels and set one up in the yard and they set one up in an old gas well about a thousand feet away because the gas well, it was, it was old abandoned gas well and what my neighbor did, uh, part of the casing had rusted off so he pulled it off, pulled the rest of it out of the ground and then he put a rock over top and he filled it with dirt mowed the grass over it. A mile away, when they drilled and fracked a well on another neighbor's farm, that all blew off. <laughs> the water was bubbling. So, but it wasn't until last fall that they addressed the issue. And what everyone needs to know, when methane comes out of the ground, hits the atmosphere, hits the sunlight, turns into formaldehyde. It's a carcinogen. Can you smell it? No. Nope. People got it in their water wells too. But the DEP was kind enough to say, this is the, the methane detector that you need to buy. It was like 130 bucks a piece. Put one in your basement, put one on your first floor. But not the industry, which is range resources in our area. Uh, as Terry also indicated about his cattle, uh, I've gone around, there's another farmer not far from Terry, and they did vertical wells on him also, not horizontals. And he lost, he was up to about 85 to 88 head since 07, he's been losing cattle. And this year, I just stopped over there about three weeks ago to a month ago, and he told, well his, his wife actually called me back because they weren't home. and said that they lost three cows this year and a calf. And riding up here, Terry said that he just ran into the, uh, the husband, Gary, and he said they lost uh, three cows so far and five calves. See this, I don't know, this is quite a distance, but last spring I was at his house and I cut a, a liver out of this calf, a piece of liver. This calf lived about two days and it has, the white eye. It's blind. The iris and pupil are completely white. The other eye was, uh, the right eye was blue. That's another connect the dot. So now he's up to over 90 head. And his feeders, um, they were only half the weight they normally should be at their age. So where are you getting your hamburger from, folks? Um, here's another farmer that I've shown these pictures many times. This, this fellow lost cattle. He lost uh, 21 head over three months. And uh, 17 of these cows were brood cows. So, again, do the math. He lost 38 head. None of these farmers have been compensated. I found another farmer up in Clearfield, a dairy farmer. They no longer dairy. Their water well got contaminated. The DEP lied to them, and so did Penn State. Their milk production went down, dropped off by half. Where are we getting our milk from, folks? They're messing with the whole ecosystem. Uh, they also lost their dogs. And they lost 10 Holsteins, and again, no one's paid them a dime. There's story after story after story out there, and the industry has tried to cover it up, and so has DEP. And so, you know, I was with the DEP. I was on a show last fall, and our uh, retired, if you will, secretary of the DEP, John Hanger, was on that panel. And I was invited, and this is invitation only, and this is on our public broadcasting station in Pittsburgh, Channel 13. 
and it's a Chris Moore. It's called Experience, and Chris Moore is uh, the uh, runs the show pretty much. Anyway, John Hanger said on that uh, panel to one person, on, uh, another person on the panel, that no one has ever been, gotten sick from this. And I just, I, I was just gritting my teeth. So after it was over, I went up to him, and I, <clears throat> and I poked him in the shoulder couple times and I said you know exactly what's going on I said you know what I'm going to extend an invitation to you I want you to ride with me for two days he stood there and glared at me and he trembles like this so needlessly to, needless to say he never took me up on my offer I will take you to people that their lives have been turned upside down, their health has been totally compromised in so many, so, so many different ways. There are people that are having like neuropathy, there are people that have, that have benzene in their blood, we've had their blood tested, their urine tested, they've got benzene in their blood, they've got phenol in their blood, they've got arsenic in their blood, they've got um, formaldehyde in their blood, uh, toluene, uh, ethylene uh, glycols, eth uh, glycol ethers, it goes on and on. People that are living around the compressor stations. We've got some people that have left, left their homes. We've got other people that are looking to get out. So there are a whole lot of issues, and I've never been up in this area before, and it just, uh, when I worked in the oil and gas field, I did come as far as Bath to a well site and uh, to deliver some product. But uh, this is such a beautiful area, folks. Man, I just, I would not want to see you guys get stamped, you know, stepped on like we did. And our rivers are all compromised. I sell heavy equipment for a living, and I call on governmental, governmental uh, agencies, townships, boroughs, municipalities. And I brought light Beaver Falls water uh, Beaver Falls Municipal Authority. I brought that to light at an EPA meeting last year. And uh, when I spoke, and a lot of people picked up on it, and the Associated Press did quite a story about right around Christmas about the Beaver River. And the reason why they've been having so many problems is because 18 miles north, they're dumping at a treatment plant. So... A lot of issues, folks, and people, people are being affected, like I said, every which way possible in all of our rivers, the Allegheny River, the Monongahela River, the Yakagany River, the Beaver River, they've all been compromised. And the bromide levels are extremely high, and the industry is trying to say it's the salt from our, uh, that we're dumping on the roads. Well, guess what? The bromide levels spiked back in, uh, I think it was July and August, and we don't put salt on our roads in July and August. So that kind of shot their theory down. Folks, stick together. Don't let this industry come in and divide and conquer you. <laughs> I've had the good fortune or the misfortune on, uh, to visit both Terry Greenwood's farm and Ron Gula's farms. And one of the many heartbreaking things I witnessed there was the, the crisscrossing of the farms with roads, making all of the fields completely unusable. And I was wondering if you could both talk about that and also, Terry, about uh, the home that your son had hoped to build on a portion of your land. Yes, uh, when they came on the property, I told my son, he, well, he got married, now he bought a house someplace else. I told him I'd give him a half acre down in the bottom of Hayfield, and I told the gas company, I said, that's his piece of property. They didn't care. That's where they put the gas well at. It was coming up the driveway, he was going to put a house trailer there, we was going to run our water line down to his house, and he was going to put a sand mound in, which cost $10,000, because he would hit at about $15,000 in the whole place, you know, at the most. Yeah. So. That's, that's some of the things they do to you. They don't care what, who they tramp on or what. You know. 
like, like she said, oh, and the roads all over the property. Through the agriculture department, when I went out to sign up every year, I lost six acres of property off of the agriculture department for funding. That's like if you have a drought, they help you out. You know, if your hay sh fields are short, they'll help you sow them. They give you so much money every year in that. You know. is, that is that okay? Is that good? Okay. Did you want more? Yeah, as uh, far as what Mara said, once the roads come in, like the fields that I cleared, I was getting prepared to lay contour strips out. And I also, when I did farm uh, full time, uh, I did promote my cattle as organically grown. And as I told Mara, I wanted to uh, go back to that again. And I also wanted to put in a five acre peach orchard. I did start a small orchard of 30 some trees. Um, but, you know, my dreams, everything went right up in smoke. And uh, they do, uh, the lies are unbelievable. They insult you so bad that, I mean, there are days that, I mean, I want to get physical. I do. And they know it. But that, because that's, they push you to that point. That, you know, it's an invasion of your privacy. They are destroying your human rights. And they act like they could walk on water. And they can't. And I'm going to tell you one more thing that you need to know. Um, when I went to get a loan to secure uh, my lawsuit against Range Resources, the bank who I ba banked with since a kid, I spoke to the commercial loan officer there over the phone. And he said, Ron, I have driven through Washington County and Greene County. I've seen the roads. I've seen the pipelines. I've seen the tanks. This is all new to the banking industry. We don't know how it's going to work. He also said, Ron, I'm going to compare this to the Obama stimulus package. It's all new. We don't know how it's going to work. He said, it doesn't matter how many wells are on your property, it's a commodity. It goes up and down with the market, so we can't put a value to it. And if we have your property appraised, your farm for round numbers may have been worth $500,000, but once it's appraised, it might be worth two hundred. dollars And in closing, Ron, we don't want it. I said, well, Lonnie, let me tell you this. Factor this into your equation. I said, my property is contaminated. All these properties are contaminated. The flow pits are covered up and buried. And what do you think is in those flow pits? Well, I don't know, he said. I said, well, do some homework. And then I told him about all the exemptions because everything reverts back to the exemptions. The clean air, the clean water, the safe drinking water, the right to know, and a Superfund Act. Superfund Act is hazardous cleanup. So if it's a benign process, why in God's green earth would you have to have these exemptions in place? So folks, uh, there's so much to this, and they've been doing this for years, and they sat behind closed doors and figured it out. And once you sign that lease, they got gotcha. you. The question I have, I hear a great deal about noise uh, in relation to the hydrofracking process, and I don't I, I hear a lot about it, I'm very concerned about it, but I also don't generally see any sort of clear specifics, and I was wondering if there's anybody here tonight who has such a thing as a figure in decibels at given distances from the wellhead. I live in a stone farmhouse, and we're about 2,500 feet from one down over a hill, and they're drilling a big one, and they lit it on the back side of our place. We got an old stone farmhouse, and with the TV on, you can hear that thing burning off, and it sounds like a jet plane coming across the top of the hill, and it's 2,500 feet to the back of our property on our farm, and it's up over the top of the hill and back at the back, and we got a big old stone farmhouse with window ledges this, that deep in it, and you can hear it with the TV on. So if you're close to it and you got a newer style house, a house that's not going, so it's going to sound like a jet airplane coming through your house, you know, and this this. I, they said a couple of weeks it's supposed to do that. And then the fumes are nasty. It smells like somebody burning material off of a car or rubbish. That's what it smells like, you know. And that's 24 hours a day. And from the road, when they lit it, they called the fire department. And what the fire department says, 
well, don't worry about it. It was on the news media down home. They says, don't worry about it. It's just a gas well burning off for two weeks, you know. And I guess if somebody's house burns down, they don't care, you know. That's, that's what they think about it. You know? The one thing you have to do, folks, you've got to band together, and you've got to get out there, and you've got to keep talking about it. You've got to keep educating. You've got to keep showing gas land. Some of those people on Gasland I've been in touch with for several years. Josh Fox and I, uh, Josh knows me quite well. When Josh came to Pittsburgh last year and we showed um, Gasland for the first time at the Bayam Theater in Pittsburgh, we had approximately 1,200 people. And afterwards, uh, and, and it went over very well. And of course we had industry there, we had a number of the industry people, some that I picked out real quick. And uh, anyway, but that, that, that happens. Um, you stick to the facts, and that's what we did. But uh, after, the, after the show, uh, Josh came over to me, and he, he said, I want to thank you. And I said, thank, thank me for what? He said, you know, you're the one that inspired me to do this. I said, you have no idea, Josh, how bad I wanted to do it. I said, because not only was I burnt and I saw what was happening, and I saw the toxic chemicals coming on my property, and when I asked the questions, and they said it was biodegradable. When you see the skull on a crossbones and it says poison on it, duh. And I told the guys, drink it. If that stuff is biodegradable, I want you to take a glass of it and drink it. No, they wouldn't do that. But anyway, the point I'm making here, gas land, they, the industry tried to debunk it. Uh, of course, DamascusCitizens.org. I'm sure you folks know about Damascus Citizens. That's a great website. I've worked with Barbara Arendale, one of the, you know one of the innovators of it, uh, for years, several years already now, and uh, I've been on panels with her, and also with Dr. Theo Colborn. What's happening is real, folks, and this is a war. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you better stand up and fight. Keep them away from your water. If you don't have no water, <laughs> if you don't have no water, what are you gonna do? Gas don't mean nothing, you know. Water's more important than any of the gas. You know, you can, you, you can live with water. Yeah. You can live with water. Yeah. That gas, forget about it. Because yeah. Yeah. I got a farm, 60 acres, temporary water supply. They got out in the country. All the water supplies, the springs, the wells, they're gone anymore. They're never coming back. You know? But they want to drill out in the country. Western Pennsylvania had a lot of good water supplies. Yeah. You've got the best one up here. You don't want them near that water. You know, they say, oh, they won't hurt it. But if they spill something, it gets in there. It killed my cattle. And there's other people that killed their cattle. There's been horses dying. There's been a lot of pe animals dying. The animals died. You know, it'll be the people next. So you got to keep them away from this water. You know? So the money don't mean nothing. I'll tell you what I make a month, $400 a month on, on two wells on my property and another well. I pay $100 a month for drinking water. You know, what's $300? $300 ain't nothing, you know. I retired at 60, I'm 63 now, and this is what I got to put up with, you know. They don't care what they do to you. They'll tramp all over you, you know. Just keep them out of this state, you know. You can be the first state in this, you know. Keep them away.